Hi there guys, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be a Virago versus Telos uh, and basically a review. So with the Telos release being almost two weeks ago now, we've had a chance to do it, play around with it, experiment, try and work out the mechanics, etc. Now obviously, different types of players will enjoy different bosses better. My idea is basically to outline the pros and cons of both bosses and then at the end do a little summary on my personal preference and what I think. So to start off with then, we'll quickly go through the Virago pros. Now Virago has been out for three years, so we do know these pretty well and has changed considerably over the years, so I'm just going to do it in its current state. Now firstly, this is a team-based boss, which means you basically need to work together as a team for the best outcome. Um, due to this, it means you also have different roles and this can be fun to rotate through them and can be done between two and five man at the moment. This basically means you have adjustable difficulty according to how experienced the team is. And nicely scaled with this is the rewards are shared between the team and not singular to each person. Therefore, the smaller team you are, the better reward. If you compare this to something like Rise of the Six, many people don't bother doing less than four Rise of the Six. One, because you need four people to get in and two, every player loots their own chest. So therefore, there's literally no reason to do less than four. Now, this might be quite controversial, but the fact that Vitalis is a super rare pet and has that little chance at the end of every kill does keep lots of people going back to Virago and has kept it alive for, you know, it's been there for three years and there's still plenty of people do it. It also has the fact that you can use almost all styles. Obviously, this varies according to what role you're doing. Melee isn't great for bomb tanking, for example. And of course, it has hard mode. Hard mode lends itself to higher, more experienced Viragos and also requires higher levels of communication and skill in order to make sure that the team is in sync and doing the right things at the correct timing. Lastly, of course, it's drops. Well, it has obviously seismics that are 1 in 40 for either seismic or 1 in 80 for a particular wand or orb. And with this drop rate being actually not too high, yes, it's probably around 10 hours because you get roughly 4 hours a kill to get a drop. 10 hours for quite a high reward drop isn't bad and especially as the loot is generally pretty good otherwise. Quickly then, moving on to the Virago cons. Firstly, it's a lengthy kill and it's very hard to go for for a short period of time. You need to go for at least one hour. Secondly, it's repetitive nature of the DPS rolls. If you're doing four to five man can mean that unless you rotate round rolls, it can be fairly boring. As well as the fact that you've got the phase two and phase four time based phases, which don't lend themselves that well to particular roles like DPSing because you can just stand there. However, some people consider this good because it allows you to enable learners to pick up and watch whilst other players show them what to do. Also, some phases or weeks, as I should probably say, are considerably more fun than others. Purple Bomb, despite being the most recently released week, isn't that great to do. It has some nice aspects, but generally is pretty bad. Same with Vitalis Week, it's pretty annoying and can't be done in very small teams. Also, finding teams can be a bit of a struggle. Uh, but just because lots of people want to do the bomb tank role because it gives you the most personal drops and also the best chance of getting Vitalis if that's what you're going for. And obviously the fact that Vitalis is extremely rare and possibly too rare and has no threshold. Okay, so now that we've covered Virago, let's move on to Telos. Telos is a solo boss and therefore you don't need to waste time trying to find a team. It's perfectly doable with all styles, however at higher in rages magic seems to lend itself more useful than others. Each phase has a different aspect to it and therefore some of them require shields and some don't so that's really nice. The most important thing about Telos is that it probably rewards knowledge of the rotations and how Telos's mechanics work and it's what I call proactive PVMing instead of reactive. So for example you need to anticipate the stun stomp and then be able to run away before it happens rather than for example freedoming one of Virago's bleeds which happens after he's done it. Another few nice mechanics that we haven't really seen before are the fact that it rewards doing streaks of kills without dying. Also being able to pick the enrage at which you start at rather than being like a Raxor where you just work it up from 0% every day. Telus also has no rotational restriction meaning you can go and do it and it will be the same at any point in time. Lastly the challenge of seeing who can get the highest enrage kill will continue to go on as we get better items into the game etc and therefore it currently stands at the highest in range of 1000 as I make this video but I'm sure it will go up and up and is a really nice challenge for those high level PVMers to get recognised with the broadcasts. Moving on then finally to Telos's cons. So to start off with it heavily relies on aura. Um, accuracy is quite low at Telos, especially when you get to higher range and he has higher defense bonuses. 
it's quite hard to hit. So having runic or you know some of the other accuracy auras for different styles is really important, or at least incredibly beneficial. The fact that it's solo, of course, means it's not sociable. You can get bored fast. Depends on what playstyle you like. So I don't really want to talk about that too much. If you DC, um, which a lot of players have problems with, especially Australians, as their servers are terrible. The fact that you have to streak kills is really, really depressing because you lose all of your loot. This can be a really nasty mechanic if you have a poor internet connection. Some people don't like the fact that it uses many supplies to kill it, although I think that depending on the style, you can either try and kill it faster and use more supplies, or you can go for a more tanky and lengthier kill and not use as many supplies. Moving on to the last few cons then. So the RNG of the beam spawns and also the minions on phase 5 can be a little bit frustrating at times, especially if you're trying to go for a speed kill or you're low on food. There are also still plenty of bugs and glitches, such as the fact that specials continue through over phases. So if he's about to do a special and then it phases, it can just hit you straight away on the next phase as soon as you drop down with no chance to react. Finally, as well, the drop rate and the way those mechanics work, because they're unclear and we don't really know the best um, way to do tell us, i.e. do fast and high enrage kills with lower streaks or to do you know, lower starting start at 100% and then build a really big streak. We don't really know how it works, so that's kind of frustrating to lots of people. So it would be good if Jaggets could make it a little bit clearer how this works. So finally, an overall f view then. So firstly, obviously the, lots of these points are personal opinion and I've also gathered feedback from other people who have done Telos and the sort of different types of people that do it, not just high tier PVMers. Personally, I am quite a social PVMer in the fact that I like doing stuff with other people and the interaction and sort of teamwork aspect is a really good one for me. So Telos doesn't really provide that, but then again, it's, that's not what it's aimed for. The other thing that semi puts me off Telos and I like Virago better is the fact that you need to sort of, you need to get three orbs in order to make one of the weapons. So you kind of, once you have one, you then feel like a real need and must to go back and complete and get the other two which can be really really frustrating whereas Virago's just got that you know okay you might go dry but once you get that drop it's kind of instant money and and I prefer that again though that's just personal preference lastly Virago has survived the test of time and has been out for three years as of last week as people begin to understand and get better at and more used to the mechanics we might see and I might personally see a change of heart and really start to enjoy it if you have made it all the way to the end of this video, you do deserve a medal because it's a hell of a ramble. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I hope it raised a few little interesting points for you to think about. And please do like and subscribe for more videos and let me know your thoughts down below in the comments.